Heavenly Father, you have been so gracious and good to us in so many ways. And just please accept our token of gratitude and thanksgiving. Uh, we acknowledge just what you mean to us and how good you are to us. So bless our time in the word and grant us your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. 1 Samuel chapter 12 talks about a word that is a very interesting word and a very important word. And um, I wonder if any of you here tonight have ever met anyone named this word. Have any of you ever heard of anyone named Ebenezer other than Ebenezer Scrooge? Um, it's a very, very interesting section of, of Scripture. God has taken care of his people in a very remarkable way. And um, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Am I right on that or not? I don't see my word. Oh, you know what? Let me let me change that. I think it's 7, chapter 7. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, chapter 7. Um, God has remarkably taken care of his people and delivered them from the hands of their enemies, the Philistines. And you see that in verses 10 and 11. Uh, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel, but the Lord thundered. That's very interesting. The Lord used thunder. The Lord thundered with a mighty sound that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion, and they were defeated before Israel. Verse 11 then says, the men of Israel went out from Mizpah, which is where they were, and pursued the Philistines and struck them as far as below Bethkar. Then verse 12. 712, 1 Samuel 712. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer. For he said, Till now the Lord has helped us. Now, my comments tonight uh, from this passage, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, uh, is in three parts. First, there's a I want to talk about the stone or the, the monument of stones itself called Ebenezer. Then, then I want to talk briefly about how, does, how do we resonate with that today. And then I want to give some practical thoughts relative to that. First of all, the stone itself. The word Ebenezer in Hebrew literally means a stone of help. Instead of it... Um, it could have been just instead of one large boulder, it could have been a mound of rocks, uh, but it was, a, it was a stone monument. And they called this stone monument that they had erected to acknowledge God's help and God's victory over the Philistines. They called it Ebenezer because, because God had helped them. This was a stone of help. God had shown up and given them victory in their time of need. And they called it Ebenezer, uh, which indicates a number of things. First, it indicates that, that they are humbly acknowledging God in what he's done for them. And that's a good thing, is it not? To great, be grateful and acknowledge what God has done. Second, it, it became a place of praise. This is where they honored God. They praised God. Uh, because God had helped them in this way. And third, this is a stone of remembrance. Uh, you know, stones don't go away. They usually stay a long time. And so as the years passed by, they would pass this monument, and uh, particularly the succeeding generations. And can you just see hear children say to their fathers as they're walking by, I see these rocks all the time. What is that? Oh, son, thank you for asking. I want to tell you about that. God showed up one time here. 
And he gave us a great victory. And we erected this um, monument that we call Ebenezer, a stone of help. And we remember God's help. So that's what the stone really, really meant. That's the first category. <clears throat> then the second category is how do we relate to it? Or how do we resonate uh, with this passage? I am convinced that this monument, this text, this passage, this story is for our benefit as well as it was for Israel's. Uh, and I think you can always ask the question in Scripture, why did God put that in the Scripture? Why would God want that to be in his Bible? I'm convinced that's because Ebenezer, the monument, speaks to us as much as it did to them. Do you remember the hymn? I'm sure many of you do. Uh, Come Thou Fount. Uh, that's the title of the hymn. It has a line in it. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. You see, this Ebenezer uh, was spoke to them and to us uh, two important things. First, it's an acknowledgement of what God has already done. God has showed up in our lives, and he has done great things for us. And second, it is an indication that we can count on God for the future. If God has done this for us already, God is going to meet us in the days to come. I think both of those things really resonate with us, do they not? We Christians need to remember what God has done. May I suggest to you several things God has done for you and for me? First, he created you. If you're here, God created you. There is nobody here that God didn't create. He has created you and he has sustained you. How many times could some of us have not been here if God hadn't seen fit to heal us or protect us or sustain us? He created us and sustained us. Second, he, he saved us. If you're saved tonight, it's not because you saved yourself. It's because God saved you. God saved you. He has done that for you. Third, God watches over you and has been watching over you all your life. And he continues to do that. And fourth, God will take us home. What he has done, is doing, and will continue to do is certainly something we should remember as we raise our Ebenezer of gratitude to God to acknowledge he created us, saved us, watches over us, and will take us home to heaven. Second is that we Christians also need to remember that as Israel looked at this monument called Ebenezer uh, to remember him for the days to come, that we Christians need to put our hope in the Lord for the days yet to be for us. I would argue for by remembering what God has done, we're encouraged to trust God for the days to come. I was thinking about that today. Why does the psalmist so often recall what God has done? Because he'll then say, now put your trust in the Lord. See, Our faith today and in the future rests upon the certainty that God has already been faithful to us in so many ways. As we think about our Ebenezer of gratitude, not only think about what God has done, but we're filled with joy and with peace in that as well, rather than fear. And we are called to put our hope in him. Well, that brings me to the third category, a practical section. We've talked about the stone. We've talked about how it resonates with us. Now let's just talk about uh, practically, how do we raise our Ebenezer? Please, no rocks in the church we're not going to put a rock a garden together anything like that but i do think we can also raise a monument uh, that we might think of as ebenezer indeed in the words of the hymn here i raise mine ebenezer that's what the hymn writer is saying we too are establishing a monument called ebenezer how do we do that let me suggest a number of things number one by thankful remembrances by thankful remembrances, we are better able to fight against worry and depression. 
I would like to suggest to you, and it just gets this real, this practical, every day make a commitment to spend some time saying nothing to God except what you're thankful for. Can you do that? Sure you can do that. Um, you know, I think we need to understand that we have a propensity, do we not, to be a little negative? Every once in a while you run into a happy-go-lucky, everything's great kind of person, and it's so sickening, isn't it? But most of us will always kind of, the, the glass is half empty. Uh, we see what's wrong. And some of us are perfectionists. And we always see what's not right rather than what is right, right? <laughs> That's just the way it is sometimes. But I, I, I would think that if we are soaked in negativity day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, it just has a way of sapping us of our gratitude. And if it saps us of our gratitude, it removes glory from God. Furthermore, it, it, it contributes to our vulnerability to worry. If we're the, the more worried I get, the more worried I become. The more depressed I am, the more depressed I get. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? There's a, there's a spiral. But by thankful remembrances, just stopping and saying, God, you've been so good to me. And I just want to thank you for that. My heart is filled with gratitude. For what you've done already in my life and what you are doing, what you promised to do, you're better able to fight well against these dark thoughts. Second, by re thankful remembrances, thus raising our Ebenezer, we're better able to exercise faith in the present situation. I'm going to try Sunday morning this week, this Sunday, if the Lord wills, to preach a point that I believe with all of my heart. You cannot live a life as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, without living a life of faith. You, you must live by faith to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we recall the words of Hebrews eleven six: 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't please God without, without fleshing that out in, in your life. So it is very important it is vital that we exercise faith in our present situation. I'm suggesting here that by offering gratitude to God, by acknowledging what he's already done, he uses more faith in us to exercise faith in God right now. I don't know about you. My need, if you pray for me, some of you say you do. I'm deeply grateful for that. I thank you, and please keep it up. But pray for my faith. Pray that I see through the eyes of faith the problems and struggles and challenges and obstacles before me. And I pray that for you as well. Third, by thankful remembrances, we are also focused more on God and His goodness. And we are more given to praise and thanksgiving. And this brings glory to God. Let me tell you what the devil doesn't want. The devil doesn't want anybody bragging on God. He doesn't want anybody praising God. He doesn't want anybody thanking God. He doesn't want anybody expressing love and worship to the Lord. He wants us to be bitter and angry and upset and blame God for what's happening in our lives. How do you fight that? By raising an Ebenezer of gratitude, acknowledge, grateful acknowledgement. God, you've been so good. And the more you give thanks to God, the more thankful you are, the more thankful you are, the more you give thanks to God. And it honors him. It praises him. Now, let me close with this. Has God been good to you? May I suggest if you, if you either didn't answer that in the affirmative or you didn't answer it at all, you got some work to do in your spiritual life. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I've been going through. Very likely not. But may I suggest to you that God is better than you think he is to your life. 
And you do a whole lot better facing whatever it is you're facing if you would get with God and be happy with him. Every victory begins with a focus on God. And his goodness. And are we not to live our lives to bring glory to him and to him alone? Okay. So let's do that. Let's make a commitment to doing that in the coming year. I want to close with a prayer. And in my prayer, I want to raise my Ebenezer. Except for the rocks, there's not much different from Samuel's day and ours. You have been good to us like you were good to Israel. Perhaps we might even suggest more so. So tonight we want to pray that you would give us a propensity, a bent towards gratitude, towards thankfulness, towards expressing praise and love and joy to you in our hearts because we know how much you've done for us and we know you've done more for us than we even know. And that the blessings we have in Christ are beyond our wildest dreams. Granted, O oh God, that we may love you more and spend more time thanking you and then in doing that, we pray that you will prepare us for the battles of tomorrow and next week and this year. That we would fight well with the joy of the Lord being our strength and relishing the grace that you have poured out upon us. So tonight we thank you. We raise our Ebenezer's. Hither by thy help we have come. And we hope, by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. May it be so in your time and for your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are in prayer time now. I will.